Should we have Trevor for this? <laughs> I feel like we should have Trevor for this. Let's promise that we never ever tell Trevor what we're doing. He'll be so disappointed he in us. He will be sorely disappointed. <laughs> the modern row makes prison wine. All right, so I suppose safety warnings right out the gate. Nobody should try this at home. We are not telling anybody that this is safe, smart, or something they should try. This is an awful idea, and it's gonna be real gross. Oh my God, uh, yeah. All right, so we're making prison wine, AKA Pruno. And there are a bunch of other names, but Pruno is the most popular one. Now we made our own homebrew beer using the Rogue's Brew Kit, and for that, it was a case of, you know, you had the wort and the mash and the, and the, the yeast and the hops, and basically, Yeast eats sugar, poops out CO2 and alcohol, right? Yes. But this is not the technique we're using to make this alcohol? No, because in prison, you have far fewer ingredients. This is basically just rotted fruit and sugar. Oh God, what yeah. are we doing? Yeah, it's like those videos you see online of the raccoon that ate all of the fruits on the vine. Sure, yeah. And he's drunk and stumbling around. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. Right, okay, so let's get started. It is a lengthy process. But first, we're gonna start off by putting 10 peeled oranges into a Ziploc bag. Okay. Is this gonna fit That's in there? Now, let's, oh, jeez. <laughs> These are already pretty ripe. Yeah. It's almost full. So 10 peeled oranges. Right. An eight ounce can of fruit cocktail. With all, with all the syrup and everything? Yeah, sure, why not? That's where the good stuff is. I don't even eat the fruits in fruit cocktail. You I just, just drink, drink the, the syrup. Goop. Ugh. All right. Now, I don't know why, no, no. <laughs> Six teaspoons. Six teaspoons? Of ketchup. I'll bet that it's for the um, the vinegar in there. Oh, sure. The vinegar probably helps to keep it from getting super infected or something. Keeping or level? Does it matter? And this is supposed to be good? No, it's not. But it should result in something that is anywhere from 2% alcohol by volume to 14% alcohol okay, by volume. Right, all right. Is that six? Yep. And now, more sugar. Of course. 50 cubes of sugar. Are you kidding me? Yeah, not on the diet at all. Uh, okay, this is all just pure sugar. Oh, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. And that's six more. Now, the most popularized recipe for this comes from a poem called Recipe for Pruno, written by Jarvis Masters, okay. a death row inmate in San Quentin. 30. I want to hear it. 45. This is Recipe for Prison Pruno, a poem by Jarvis Masters. Take 10 peeled oranges, Jarvis Masters. It is the judgment and sentence of this court. One eight ounce bowl of fruit cocktail that the charged information was true. Squeeze the fruit into a small plastic bag. This doesn't rhyme at all. No, it doesn't, but oh, I'm gonna okay. stop there. I don't wanna hear the rhyme of the ancient mariner. It's kind of depressing as well. Uh, okay, great. All right, so then now what? Now that we have most of our prime ingredients in here. Prime. That's a phrase. We're gonna zip it up. Okay. You wanna be careful not to puncture the bag, but we're gonna start mashing it up. Okay, well here, let's get rid of some of this air because I don't want it to oh, to pop, pop it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, gonna be just, tough with the sugar though, right? Well here, once we start mashing, hopefully the liquids will dissolve we'll the sugar. We'll break down the sugar, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you gotta get in there and, and really knead the sack. Knead <laughs> the sack. Oh God, you smell that ketchup. Like it starts to smell good and it's like, no, no it's not. This is gonna be tasty. I don't even know if we should ferment it. I think we should just drink it right now. Uh, you, you know what? I'm thinking right now is as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> it is not gonna get any better in a week. I think that looks good. It looks like a good consistency. Uh, okay. You really wanna mash it up until it's like a paste. And now we're gonna add 16 ounces of tap water. All right, do we have another bag? Yeah. Okay. We're adding how much, two cups of water? Uh, yeah, 16 ounces. That is our batch. Now what we're supposed to do is heat it up. We need to run it under warm water for about 20 minutes or so. Okay, and we're trying to get it how warm? <laughs> Not hot. Not like this, okay. Yeah. All right, warm it up, and then we're gonna wrap it up and store it away in darkness. That is important. I'm gonna start running this under warm water. All right, we got warm pulpy goop and we don't have yeast, but there is bacteria in there. And what is that bacteria called? <laughs> Zymomonas mobilis is okay. one, I don't know if it's in there, I assume it is. It's one of the bacteria that will, there's also a fungus who has a name I cannot pronounce, but apparently fungus, bacteria, and yeast are able to create alcohol, so I'm gonna assume bacteria is the agent in this one. And what does bacteria like? Sugar, uh, food, 
and, yes. and dark. Uh, yes. Because otherwise, uh, light has a sterilizing effect, it right? It will propagate in warm, dark places. So we're gonna wrap it up in this tarp. Okay. To keep it both warm and dark, and we're gonna tuck it away. And now, every day, you're gonna come out here and burp your baby and reheat it for about 15 minutes under warm water. I didn't realize I was in for the long haul on this. Now I have a commitment. You're gonna do that every day for nine days, and then I'm gonna come back out here and we're gonna toast. Uh, yeah. I, uh, then this, we're gonna this, die. This, okay, let's say, nutty idea, you're not a fan of the bacteria fermentation. You want something cleaner, you want something faster. I've heard there's an easier way using just yeast. Now, you're supposed to use champagne yeast, but I believe, theoretically, it should work just fine with baking yeast, so I figure we'll do two batches. This yeast is the yeast from a brewing kit that we have over at Scam Stuff. This yeast I just grabbed out of the kitchen, and you can use any fruit juice. You can, as long as it has 20 grams of sugar per serving, orange juice has like 45 grams of sugar per serving, so there should be plenty of sugar for the yeast in there, and if you use something like, a, you know, Welch's grape juice, that's like 35 grams per serving. So I got two containers, we basically just just fill up the containers with orange juice. You don't want it filled all the way up because it will increase in volume as the yeast eats the sugar and releases CO2. You'll get foam coming out the top, so you want a gap up top. This one's gonna be so much easier and less illicit, isn't it? It's also gonna taste great and get us actually hammered and not send us to the hospital. Now, theoretically, if we're actual brewers, we should know exactly how many teaspoons of this stuff to put in. Mm -hmm. I just wanna experiment. This is what happens when an idiot tries it. Here, you try that one. Okay. Let's try a, qu a quarter teaspoon in there, and I'll do two of these for this since it's a bigger volume. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Here you go. All right, now you notice it's floating right on top, so we'll kind of get it mixed up, spread throughout. Okay. All right, now here's the thing. Over the next two or three days, that yeast is gonna start eating sugar, pooping out alcohol, but it's also gonna release CO2. Mm -hmm. So if you leave this sealed, it'll eventually explode. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways to handle it. We're gonna do the fancy way with one of these proper valve stoppers. We're gonna put a little bit of water in there so as the CO2 goes out, no contaminants get in. Oh, good, okay. All right, and same thing with that. But let's say if you don't have one of these, you could just take a balloon and put it over the top. That latex barrier will keep outside things from corrupting the inside, and then also all that gas will just inflate. Now that stopper here, as this fills up with CO2, watch, the gas bubbles will uh, start letting it out like that. Oh, sure. So as soon as tomorrow, we should start seeing bubbles coming up, meaning it's fermenting. How long does this one take? Two to three days. Oh, really? Yeah. Much more easy. Yeah, safer, better. Get your hands on yeast. I do not trust that bacteria doing the job down there. And now we wait. Yeah. Ten days. Burp this thing like a nasty, filthy, petulant, diaper-soaked baby. You didn't. You had someone else do it. I did it like half the time. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did, yeah. uh, did you dip into the stash? No, oh God, no, okay. No. There were flies buzzing around this thing. Really? And every time you open, it's I want double you, bag. you burp it and just, just take a little aromatic whiff. Okay. Whew. It's, uh, stings the nostrils. It may, uh, it's pungent. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> it's just a bunch of rotted fruit that's been in ketchup that's been kept warm. Okay, what do we do with it now? What do we do with it now? Okay, we gotta run it through a strainer. We have to run it through some cheesecloth. All right, well, let's yeah. get to it. All right, cheesecloth strainer coming up. Okay. Oh, good. I'm just gonna dump it. Okay, let me make sure I hold. Yeah, tighten it up. There oh, we go. Good, God, good, good. Big old Got it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, it's splashing on me. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I can't escape the stench. <coughs> well, you know what comes next? You having a rough time? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Because that's going in our bodies. <laughs> yeah, do we need to squeeze it? Grab those opposite edges for me so we can okay. lift it up like a bag. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna get in there and do it, man. It's a thing. I'm just doing it. This, this is probably the worst thing oh. that we've done on this show. Yep, yep, yep. More than we'll ever, ever need. Here, uh, put it, there we go. I just don't want any of this to splash anywhere. That's where I have to be very, very careful not to spill any. Oh. See, it doesn't look bad. Holy crap, man, we did it. We made prison wine. We did. This is authentic prison grade hooch. 
Is it safe? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Considering that this is a lot of mold and bacteria, it's rotten fruit, you can get botulism and die. Right, uh, that was a good experiment, and we made some damn fine prison wine. If this was a laboratory, if I could vouch for everything being clean, I might be tempted to give this a try, but I definitely saw fruit flies crawling in and out of that thing as it sat in a corner of this warehouse for 10 days straight. And if you're telling me that botulism's on the menu, I'm gonna say good on us for having made that. But I am super stoked to try these. The Pruno fermented over 10 days using bacteria and mold. This is using yeast, so it only takes two to three days. So I came back two days ago and remade this. The big one has the brewing yeast in it, the small one had the baker's yeast. And I don't know if it's just the container size, but look at the difference in how much outgassing is happening on the fancy yeast. Yeah, this one's practically percolating, and this one's really not doing it much at all. Yeah, it's hard to know how much booziness is right. in there. I'm guessing that this will taste just like old warm orange juice. This one I expect to have some kick and actually be pretty good. Okay. All right, you down for this? Yeah. Now this one, unlike the Pruno, is perfectly safe. <laughs> you ain't gonna get me saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far, as far as I know, two day old orange juice with some yeast in it, I don't think is gonna kill us. I don't recommend anybody try any of this at home. Do your own research, don't blame us. But I do know that there are commercial products that are intended to do exactly what we're doing. So I have to assume it's not that bad. What a ringing endorsement. <laughs> I have to assume it's not that bad. Put that on the label. <laughs> yes. Here's to swimming with bow legged women. Oh my God. Just tastes like orange juice. Tastes like orange juice. Yeah. And you can taste the yeast. You can definitely smell the yeast. Yeah. I normally have an okay palate when it comes to tasting when there's alcohol in something. If you gave this to me, I would just assume it's sparkling orange juice. Meanwhile, this guy's a roiling cauldron. All right. They're singing to us, Jason. Now this looks clearer. I'm tempted to think. Oh, it's fizzing. No. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, wow. You can smell the hoochiness. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, this really doesn't smell much different than that. Not to me. It, it, it smells way, way different. Yeah. Maybe, I'm, maybe it was the notes of ketchup I was getting from the other <laughs> one. This one seems fine. It has a good nose on it. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, very different. Yeah, so uh, way more bubblier. Mm -hmm. This is super sparkling orange. Not as sweet? Not nearly as sweet, which tells me that this yeast has been doing its job. Right. Munching up the sugar, pooping out the alcohol. Uh, these guys are lazy bastards all just hanging out of the bottom. I'm not feeling it yet, but... I mean, it seems to me like if you're gonna go to prison, might as well smuggle some yeast up your butt <laughs> for when you're there. This gets a huge thumbs up. So I'm gonna say, if you wanna do this at home, number one, do your research. Number two, get some champagne yeast or brewer's yeast and uh, go to town. This was this was exactly two days and I, I put a whole bunch in there. I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that this was working. And it's easy. It doesn't require any babysitting. No, uh, this one required nothing. That one was uh, demon scary, but, but this one was great. I don't think Trevor would approve. <laughs> we want to bring him a jug. 